Welcome to Amuna is our future. Today is a surprise live class for the new year and Mashiach. That's the question that people are asking. That's the post that we're getting the most interest in right now. Especially, thank God, we had a beautiful beginning to the new year. Rosh Hashanah in Yushalayim in Jerusalem. And Rav Shona Moresh and Rav Dayan Elgrod were in Uman. And still there, they're on their way back. Let's pray that they have a safe trip. And we are sitting now in my room, in my home, because there is a shutdown in Israel. And it's the best place to be right now during this time. We do have some more hand sanitizer, just because I love shaking this bottle around on these videos. No, but seriously, it's very important to keep in mind that we are in a time where we're hopefully during these next three weeks, not only are we in one of the holiest time of the whole year, but we're also in a time where we can create an energy, not just for ourselves, that's positive, also bring that healing. Avina Malkeinu, we should take away this magefa, this, this coronavirus challenge should give us success in fighting it and defeating it and becoming more close to ourselves and to Hashem and to each other, please God. And this is the kind of world that we are entering in this new year. And it's something which we should appreciate is, and not take for granted. So all of us are here in a way that is slightly different. Like we're not going to have the edited version that comes out every week on the website. And Rav Oresh is away, so we won't be having our Munas, our future class or Muna class in the studio like we usually do. And that will be the same for the following week because it's going to be Yom Kodesh, Yom, Yom Kippur, and Motsi Yom Kippur. And then we're going to be going into Sukkot. And so since we're entering this special holy time, and like we already spoke about in our many classes before, and you guys should go back, because we spoke a lot about this month of Tishrei, the time we're in, and you go back there and you'll see those classes are discussing Tishrei and what it is to be in Rosh Hashanah, in Yom Kippur, in Sukkot, and Shemini Yetzirah, in Torah, and how this year comes out on the Shabbos, and specifically it's a year which Tafshin Pe'alef has, which we are in now, is is produce and actors. And this is part of the reason that we did this surprise class in my home is because we didn't want to miss the opportunity that there's a special energy of tshuva in the world. Sorry, you made tshuva. We are now in a time of slichot and avina malkeinu, a special time where we can really draw closer to our father, our king, and everyone in the world has that opportunity to tap into the moment we're in right now. And it's a shame to not have some class come out live during this time, at least one during this month of Tishrei. Like we hope, hopefully at the end of Tishrei, we'll have a Muna class again in the studio with Rav Shalom Oresh and myself also. We'll do some nice classes. Hopefully pre everyone should pray. Have Yonatan Galet again in English. And please God, we've done Elgrad. We'll have some more longer classes from him. Right now we've just got the Daily Halakhic Shir, Daily Halakhic Corner, and it's coming from Uman till the last few days. And hopefully in the, in the end of the week, he'll be from Jerusalem because he'll have a safe trip home. These are the kind of things that are going on. Just keep you filled in what's going on. But the question everyone wants to know, and someone asked here on our YouTube chat, do you think everyone will know if they meet Mashiach or do you think some people won't even have a clue? Good question. So uh, I'm not going to be able to answer like Rav Shalom Oresh. I don't put myself in that place. I'm not officially like leading these classes as a as a q a or as a rabbi to ask answer questions but what we can do is one repeat what rav shalom Arsh said and it was very important that we go over it and we're posting it again in our social media platforms especially the classes leading up to uman and and rosh hashanah and and the whole energy that uman went global and the light was mispashet as we say in, in hebrew it went out it spread out to the whole world and there was an ability to Baruch Hashem, to tune in the world to a new level of what it means to understand that or the light of uman and rav Arsh shared that on a very deep level that Rabbi Nachman himself was communicating in some way or form, and some people didn't understand how that could be. I also don't. But the point is, the communication came through to Rav Oresh that Uman is mispashet, is spreading out globally, and the light that Rabbi Nachman brings down on Uman Rosh Hashanah is not just for Uman this year, it was for the whole world. And thankfully we had... Um, from our friends in America, for example, they had Uman in America, or other people play made their kibbutz, their different gatherings around the world to represent that 
the, the energy, the simcha, the joy. Personally, I was in Yushalayim. I mean, it's such a pleasure to walk the streets of Yushalayim because thankfully we were, were allowed to go to shul and I was able to be with my friends and my uh, Rebbe and there was all the different, you know, kapsula and the masks and thank God there was no issues with any like police or anything like that because the walk I had is local and it's amazing that we were able to go ahead with those special prayers and, and I appreciate that the prayers in Uman apparently were very unified. And that's what Rav Elgad spoke about today. You can go check it out. Daily Halakit Corner. That one of the the uh, tikkunim, the fixings of today, which is a fast. I'm actually fasting right now, so excuse me if I'm a little bit weaker or pale or whatever. Like we're, we're going through, I mean, what the opportunity is, is to unify. That's what happened in Uman apparently in this, this Rosh Hashanah. There was a lot of actors, a lot of unity, a lot of people prayed together. The wind usually, and... We know that the concept someone's asking again that we should explain about Mashiach and Rav is talking about. So the, as I said, Pidus and redemption, and that's the idea of Pe'alef, is the year, Tavshin Pe'alef, and like we're only 200 and, uh, let's work it out, the maths, 229 years till the completion of this whole history of the 6,000 years of history, and we go into that new world for sure. There's no like going back after that. We're in the world Yom Shikulu Shabbos, um, the world of completion, and that is the next level, the next millennium. You can look at it in the Ram Chal Swaram, and Moshe Chaim Lazotto, where he talks about these different stages of Mashiach, and there's other opinions about that. You go to Rambam in, in, um, in, in, in his beautiful Holy Mishnah Torah, and we have all the different, you know, Chazalim, the different Perishim and Shas, and people, rabbis, there's other very special rabbis who talk about what it is when Mashiach comes, and you can go to those rabbis. Um, online, you know, just Google it. Uh, but the point is that in terms of Rav Oresh's specific message of Amuna, that the relationship with Hashem will become so clear and so one. And I'm happy today, thank God, the live feed, we shouldn't, you know, take for granted the live feed's working beautifully. I'm sitting right next to um, where my Wi-Fi is. We were going to have Nissan Black here, so we set this up for him to come speak here the other day. He had a big Zoom class for hundreds of girls in the U.S., and uh, ended up, he did it in Shmuel Novi, but I had the whole area set up for him, so now I'm using it, you know, because there's a lockdown, and, you know, the studio uh, is not open right now, so just to anyone tuning in right now, why we're sitting in my house and not in the uh, usual Chutz Chesed, and we appreciate them hosting it on their social media platforms, the Prayers of Israel, and where's our future, but basically, let's get into this, this class now in like a more intensive way, in a way that we can taste a little bit what it means, the light of Mashiach. Someone like Rav Oresh, I think, is holding such a level, in my humble opinion, where he's already feeling that light of Mashiach. He's worked on himself so many years. We're talking about 30, 40 years of going to Uman and working on himself, praying and spodidus and applying everything that you can read in his Garden of Amunah series. And not only that, but if you go to all his, you know, his institutes, you see the amount of people that he's influencing, yeah? And it's very powerful. Someone's asking about subtitles. So the good news is the English subtitle um, is going to be on most of our classes on Brazil of English. It is Brez of English. So um, you can go to those classes there. And Brez of English, you see the subtitles. We're going live on the YouTube platform now. And the Facebook, generally, everything we put has subtitles. I don't think I need subtitles. I'm from London, so hopefully I'm speaking enough English. But um, the point is that all of us, in our own way, um, are growing in our amuna. And Rav Oresh is a leader in this. It's something which he branded the concept of Amuna in the most obvious way. His books have become bestsellers. You know, I myself, you know, have you know read those books over twenty years ago and we're talking about thousands and thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands, maybe even in the millions. I mean he's reprinted a million Lukuti Marons which are being sent out with time, you know, we gave Nissan Black when he came to studio a few of the new copies, here Ravorish's version, and they're going out and more and more. When we come to America, we give out, you know, hundreds, we sell hundreds. It was very popular when we first put it out. So the idea of, you know, the Garden of Muna series being in everybody's hand is, is in itself, as Rav Orish has said many times in our Muna classes, and I recommend going back to watch the playlist where we, you guys were able to ask questions and Rav Dianel got translated and we had our special guests. And it's not just like a small list of guests, you know, I'm still like amazed what we accomplished within 12 weeks. We had Nissan Black, obviously, we had 
Yosef Daniel, we have Mordechai Ben Avram, we have, I mean, these are people from all different kinds of lifestyles and backgrounds. We had Shl- Reb Shlomo Katz, and you know, the music, we had Eliezer Kosman, Kosoy, and El, El- Anatan Malul, and um, who else? I mean, the list is just, you, had, you know, we had the last cast, we had Nissan Black, we had a special guest, um, ben, Benjamin Blackwell, Ben Blackwell, and that was a Big on um, you know, the type of people we're already looking into is subliminal. We spoke to him, he's a very famous singer in Israel, and we'd love to have him come into our studio. I'm friends of him, and he messaged night that you know, whatever time we give, he'll, he'll try and make it there from Tel Aviv. And there's other people we're looking into. I mean, you guys can reach out as the kinds of you know, guests you would like, but what people are really want to tune into the Mashiach. So, I'm trying to explain to you that the whole concept of Amuna going so out there that people from all different societies, someone like Nissan Black from Seattle, someone like um, Mordechai Ben Avram from LA, Yosef Danil Ben from Mexico, and when we do our tours, we go to New York, we go to Miami, we go to Toronto, we go to Montreal. The, the Torah of Amun is everywhere, like it's in every country. In London, people reach out. I get from all over the world on my phone, everywhere in the world is reaching out, India and you know, all, of, all the different states in America. People want to tap into the light of Amun. That's the point I'm getting in. So it's getting to a point where with the internet being so evolved now, and the live feeds and the Zoom chats and the WhatsApps and the live feeds on YouTube and Facebook and all the different podcast audios. You know, podcasting is a big thing nowadays. Yeah, someone just said Shalom from Texaco. You know, that like we've got the the uh, the the Muna is our podcast, the Muna is our future podcast and Brez of Israel podcast that's gone, you know, hundreds of views and listeners, excuse me, not views, listeners. And we also have a member on fasting. So you're gonna like give me a little break here with my speech and stuff but the idea of also my personal part is unity flow podcast relationship flow podcast and there's all the, the podcast mentality of the world now and now i'm seeing personally i listen to all these podcasts joe rogan and uh this house and you know all these these podcasts in the world out there nowadays i mean there's not a person who's probably right now who's who's marketing themselves doesn't have some form of podcast so you know Gedalia fenster's on you know is on our podcast but he's also on his is uh, SoundCloud and YouTube, and we're happy to host him here as well. Once a week, we usually try to put something up. Um, and the concept of Amuna through all these different things, and he, like I'm saying, even the non-Jewish, the general world podcasts are the the mindset is going to a different level of accomplishment, of meaningfulness. Like of people are coming on the show, and they're they're talking about you know a need for a deeper look at life, and it's amazing if you if you realize that that people are changing and like we hear someone here is now putting some art up. Yeah, we've got beautiful um, YouTube and Instagram art that we get. Thank God our team is putting out beautiful pictures. I, I appreciate them, the posts they make. And then on Instagram, we have someone who I, I remember the name exactly right now, but you go there into our Instagram. Usually daily, we put up a post from our from a, one of our followers and it comes out as beautiful artwork of sayings that are inspirational and this concept of a moon has gone everywhere into all avenues into music we have a moon of music that's why i'm saying with all our guests the idea of music coming and inspiring our generation and the the opportunity to do a music revolution that people like nisim should not just stay in the jewish world it should go mainstream you know me personally um, i'm a musician i'd love to see you know more elevated music i personally have streamlined everything i have on my on my experience of internet and i've spoken about this being living more effective 10 habits of truly effective living you can google google that concept 10 habits of truly effective living this idea of living truly and effective is based on stephen covey but we're taking it to the next level of of amuna and this this these three days that we're in now are connected very much like we started off with the first two days of Rosh Hashanah that to me is the first two habits that are the highest level habits the habits that Stephen Covey didn't speak about they're the concepts of be basically of having a Muna and and getting rid of distractions I believe those are the two fundamental of habits of the of the ten Dibris, the Esa Dibris, the Ten Commandments of Anochi, that Hashem himself took us out of Mitzrayim, and that's the connection of Amuna, that we have Amuna, that something real happened in the world, a real experience. It's not just based on um, intellect, but the actual experience of Amuna, like we see by Rav Shalom Morish, we see such an, a tangible Amuna, that when you've met him in person, and it's Chavau in that respect of the coronavirus, when you meet him in, po- in person, you get to experience, not the coronavirus, but the Amuna, and the 
coronavirus preventing now those tours that we do, the North American tour, we were going to go to South Africa, and we've mentioned many times here, the idea is we can do it online now. So at least you get to experience his tangible Muna, how he speaks about everything with such a tangible Muna, and that is now Miss Pache. His levels of a Muna is going global as well. So I don't know what happened now with YouTube, but we'll just resume it. It's all part of the fun, even my internet for some reason. Doesn't work perfect, can it happen? Thank you for joining us again on YouTube. But the idea of the Muna going Mispashe, even with the technical issues, that we are going and growing a Muna classes. There's so many, thank God, other breasts of Mashbiyam now. And like I said, in Umar Apani, there's a big unity of all the different Mashbiyam, all the different people, influences in Breslov and Amuna, they came together and Davin there together. That feeling of unity I personally had in Rosh Hashanah, you know, it was powerful. And I read a quote, I don't know if I actually, sorry, I don't know if I read it, I posted it in this in Black's uh, special class, the 12th class we had. Again, go to the playlist and watch it. And I put it underneath in the Facebook, but I'm going to read it today. And then I've got, this is an important document, this is the beginning of my personal book, United Souls. And I feel this is very much in one with the concept that Rav Elgar was talking about today. Unity and Rav Oresh himself is demonstrating that he's able to unify so many different kinds of people through Amuna. It's a universal principle. And the idea that this year is so ready for Amuna, I've said, Tavshim Pe'alef, this is Pedus and Achdus, this is a time of redemption and unity. That there is there's a, a power, hopefully once the American election's out of the way, hopefully when all this energy of, of, of uh, political you know, divisiveness has calmed down a little bit, and people start to look again for the real inner content, not just this media-driven uh, narrative that's making everyone crazy, we can actually tune into a narrative that's true, the inner narrative, the, the narrative of the soul. It's the idea of the unity concepts, the Amuna concepts that I'm bringing down here, that we should tune in in every single day of our life. We, all of us, every person has a soul, and that soul is communicating to us. We get It returns to us, I'm right next to my bed actually, and it comes down the soul into my life into my soul, into my being. It's, it's Saharahi, it's pure. And that soul has the power. And we'll talk about it in this book, United Souls by Eddie Goldsmith, A Journey Towards Real Unification in Everyday Life. I'm very excited to get this out there. I've only got right now 17 pages. We're still at the beginning stage. But on the last few pages that I've written, and this has been you know, inspired thanks again to Jeff Pulver's community, who's given me that voice that I can you know, find things that I need to share more on a universal level. Over there, you see, I put, uh, we are life, so now what? That's my latest chapter. So we're all pleading for another year. It's intense, especially in this difficult climate and historical challenge we all face. Survival is not just about our physical presence, but our spiritual purpose. You know, I was just watching something about the Holocaust. Unbelievable what people went through. And, you know, Havda, we're now over 70-something years, 75 years since then, and... We have to not just appreciate the gift of survival of the, of the body, that I'm physically as a Jew alive, but we also have the spiritual purpose that we bring. Yeah, that we must understand the gift of life in this world and our dedication to our purpose of every waking moment together. It's a unified experience, all of us. We all wake up, we all have souls, we're all human, there's values we all share. We can't underestimate the existence of our souls in this world, especially, and I don't mean this, God forbid, in any racial form. Once again, this is all about unity, but it's just knowing I'm a Jew and knowing my purpose, being proud of that, not being um, embarrassed or, or trying to hide my Jewishness, my Jewish soul, yeah, that I have a Jewish soul. Again, quote, says Martin, uh, sorry, Martin, says Mark Twain, yeah, Mark Twain. We can't, yeah, underestimate, that's him. On the Jews, if, here, here we go, if the statistics, I need to drink something, I'm fasting, you have to have mercy here. If the statistics are right, the Jews constitute but one quarter of one percent of the human race. It suggests a nebulous puff of stardust lost in the blaze of the Milky Way. Properly, the, properly, the, new, the Jew ought hardly to be heard of, but he is heard of, has always been heard of. And remember, this was written in 1863, I think, or something like that. He is as prominent on the planet as any other people. And his importance is extravagantly, uh, extravagantly out of proportion to the smallness of his bulk. His contributions to the world's list, and this means women as well, because his and hers, remember, we're in, in the 2020 now vision, yeah? Is, is, our, is his list of great names in literature, science, art, 
music, finance, medicine, abstruse, learning. And now when we say even the internet, yeah, I mean, look, Mark Zuckerberg, the Facebook world, uh, Google, everything. I mean, it's all, you know, we, we can't underestimate our influence. Are also very out of proportion to the weakness of, of the numbers. He has made a marvellous fight in this world in all ages and has done it with his hands tied behind him. He could be vain of himself and excuse for it, which we're definitely not vain. There's no, I mean, maybe there's some crazy Jews vain, but the ones I know are very heartbroken and, you know, we've gone through a lot, you know. Um, the Egyptians, the Babylonians, the Persians rose, filled the planet with sound, splendor, and faded to dream stuff and passed away. The Greeks and Romans followed, made a vast noise, yeah. Like a lot of big rash, you know, they one of the biggest empires of the world, yeah. I mean, me personally, is what I learned in school. This is how history was taught. And that was my big question, why the Holocaust at the end of it all. Anyway, um, and pe other people have sprung up and held their torch high for a time, but it burned out and they sit in twilight now and vanished. The Jews saw them all, survived them all. And now as what he was, always exhibiting no interdependence. And with, sorry, that's... Yeah, sorry, I made turn to the wrong thing. Yes, there is independence. No. no decadence. Yeah, this is what there isn't. No infamies or age, no weakening of his parts, no slowing of his energies, no dulling of his alert but aggressive mind. All things are mortal with the Jews, all other forces pass, but he remains and she remains. The Jewish people remain. What is the secret of their mortality? Mark Twain. 1897, so it was a bit more recent than 63, but 1897, over 123 years ago. And it's true today, everyone who's honest can agree, and there's no like, you know, God forbid, some ag evil agenda behind it, just totally with the divine mission of souls, that the Jewish people exist for a purpose, and certain souls, a universal message of all is to recognize, this is back to my, my words, the expression of different level souls. We all share the root reality of a soul of humankind. Everyone has a soul. Yeah, this is what we've been talking about the last few weeks. You go back to my class and Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, even today now fasting, you, the, the idea is to strengthen the soul level, a little bit of less physicality, a little bit less materialism. Yeah, the coronavirus has helped with that as well. Less materialism, more spiritual dependence, more spiritual interdependence. Yeah, that we should become more joined up. Yeah, and... One of the main questions that aided my search for the Jewish soul was, why am I Jewish? I mentioned this before. That with the Jewish Holocaust, I know very little about. You know, what happened? I didn't know anything about it growing up a secular in London. I didn't know what this Jewish soul was so much. It wasn't communicated to me. I had to go search for it. And that so made me seek out in the Holy Land and study. I went to programs and learn. Like you now have online opportunities as well. We didn't have that then. It was just email, I think. That was about as advanced as it got. And some like crazy old school videos that no one had the patience to watch. This led me to seek out my Jewish roots. And I came, I went and sorted out. And that was Rav Orish's. And you look at the beginning of his Garden of Muna book. He sorted out everyone. To bring Mashiach, we have to sort it out. We have to really seek it, search Want, first, yearn. People were yearning to be an Ummah this year. Thousands of people. That yearning means something. Don't discount any yearning. Anything positive by a human soul in this world should never be discounted. If a tiny virus, as Rabbi Jacob said, tiny, minuscule, minute virus can affect the world in such a massive way. All the more so, as the Rambam says, that every single Jewish soul and human soul can influence the world towards the balance towards good. To take those scales of Tishrei and scale it towards the scale of positivity and hopefully the final redemption. Yeah? We must join together as a united soul to understand emotional intelligence, versatility. Yeah? People are very into you know, these, these thought leaders nowadays and a lot of them say important things and I agree with that concept of emotional intelligence and versatility. I mentioned it in my classes, but it's not enough. We have to have the soul level to be able to transform this technological revolution that the AI world that's about to approach us should not, God forbid, take over without the soul. We need to have the soul. The, the, what should be driving all of the technological revolution is the soul. It's not enough to have these, like, you know, these, I don't want to get political, but people who think they have the right to tell us how to speak and how to think, or this, like, you know, uh, political correctness, or let's say there's also the whole, um, God forbid, the cancel movement, whatever. I don't want to get in political, 
But the idea is that the truth, what should guide people as what's correct, should be the soul level. And if you say, how do you attach yourself to the soul? So then we have plenty of classes all about soul. That's what the Muna teachings empowers the soul. And how does that bring out Mashiach? Because the soul of Mashiach is, is, is mispache. It spreads out into all of us. So that everyone has a little spark. Yeah, and everyone has someone's asking they're trying to partner. What you do is you go to just sorry, a quick side note it's important that people know how to do that. You go to the uh, underneath the links, you press on the uh, the place to partner, and then it gives us a landing page. And over there, there's either email you can you know partner through contact me direct, or you can partner through buying books and share those books. There's also a link there. You can partner by sharing the videos, you can partner by just listening and commenting, giving feedback. You can partner by donating PayPal, secure their American friends of Amuna. The idea is that you can partner. That's another way, once again, charity is a huge way of bringing the redemption. And this is a very important time right now during the 10 days of redemption. I never really, you know, push out there too much the charity thing. There, thank God there are other people who have that vocation. My thing is more just to share the teachings of Ravarish and the Muna, make sure the social media, everything's holding at a place. That's personally my my mission in in Chesed and Brez of Israel. And I believe also my personal mission and I'm writing this book. As you can see, it's all about souls and Amunah. The concept of everyone here has the power to share Amunah. It also can be in their own you know, social media place to write your book. Everyone here can write their own book and their own message. Everyone has a song. Just like we're saying, everyone has a spark of Mashiach. Everyone has so much power and potential within their being. And it's so underestimated. We're souls. Why do you think the whole year, the whole calendar surrounds about what kind of year we're going to have, what kind of day it's going to be? Everyone is very important, these kind of realities of the soul that's going on right now. And the prayers we're saying, if you tune into the Siddha, um, it should be fine. The, the link should be working. Maybe I'll reshare it. Um, maybe there's a, a slight issue. You can email me and I'll send you the link and make sure it works. Um, people are commenting, I'm just making sure that they know about that. There's no issue, we usually generally with the, the link. Let me, I even can check it here right now, if you don't mind waiting one moment while I do so. I've got our Breslov page, like in of English, you go to the Facebook, you go down, we've got a nice, you know, it's pretty much on most of the posts there, and I specifically emphasize that, I'm going to press it now. Let's see, it should be working, no problem, it's working 100%, and um, maybe I'll even post it again here in the chat so you guys can get it in person it's the wonders of technology you know this is what we're talking about in terms of the ability to bring Mashiach that we can communicate online in such an easy fashion it's not like it's hard you know to to share Amuna like in the previous generations it was something which was a struggle for people to do and you know to be able to communicate these ideas of the Baal Shem Tov or in the Siddiquim and of Breslov you had to you know, travel somewhere or do something. I think it went went out. Yes, there's the link. So you have the link now there. And I can probably even share it on Facebook. Let me go there. I just don't want to take anyone's time. Here we go. Let's go. It will tell me that there's a new, is live. Yes, see? I mean, look, I'm demonstrating, it's very important, you know, that it's interactive. That's one of the, the ideas of today's class, even though we weren't going to do one originally because we're not in the studio. But just to show you the power of being interactive, that all of us can compose, can communicate. Here's someone here on Facebook, Shalom Rabbi from Down Under, all the way from Australia. That's another place. Thanks for reminding me. I didn't mention Australia. I'd love to come visit Australia and do an online thing. You know, you guys can make it happen. I have all my artists, my musicians, but specifically Rav Shalom Morish and the Muna teachings, but the idea that it should go together with Muna music, Muna personalities. The point is to bring Mashiach, this light has to miss And right now, our videos, thank God, are getting, you know, 60,000 or so. Uh, I don't know, maybe uh, you just need to reset your Google cookies, sorry. Your, your, uh, yeah, I used to work for cor <laughs> Corporate America, would you believe it? And that was one of the things I remember helping guide people through to go when they couldn't get into links. You just have to, you know, reset your cookies. So there's always that idea of renewal, resetting. This is the during the 10 days. It's not just an internet thing. It's a personal thing. I'm, I'm trying all the time to grow. I'm a father. You know, to bring up children nowadays is, is a really big struggle and a challenge. And all of us have that power 
to tune in to to the soul level with our family and to see the people around us, the close people to us as souls. They're not just people for us to, you know, to get what our needs met or whatever it is, you know, you see, you know, the, to your agendas, like God forbid in politics, it goes on all the time, but to actually connect with people really, to be truly bound with the with the soulmate, to be respectful, please God, oh, I need to work on this, you know, it's not something I'm, I'm mastered. And the ideas of Amuna and Rav Oresh's teachings give us an opportunity, excuse me, to really join together in a way that, you know, that you are more inspired, more enlivened, more soulful, more spiritual, and not held down by your physical needs as much. And that's part of fasting today. That's why the power of unity comes out in the daylight today, because, and Yom Kippur as well, such a holy day coming up, that when you're in the fasting mode, your soul is able to dominate more, and therefore you're able to join together the largest being, because you don't have the physical body you know, blocking that. Now, is that the purpose? No, the purpose is actually Sukkot. Sukkot, Man Simchatenu, to take all that spiritual energy from these during these 10 days and to now bring it with the with the certain awareness of Hashem, to bring it with joy into your Sukkot, into your inner reality. That's the idea of going into the Sukkot, going into the inner realms. You're not going in, back into your house and making big part. You're going into the inner reality. That's, in a way, the lockdown that's created here in Israel. We have to be a bit more inner again, that there's an opportunity to go within and to now experience spirituality while eating, while dancing, Zman Simchatenu, while hopefully we'll have some sort of Simchas Beis Hashem. I don't know how it's going to be, or Simchas Torahs on the Shabbos this year, but the idea will have that experience of joy in the physical things. That that's the idea that when you have a connection, like the idea of two two people when they connect physically, they have relations. That the, it's the most uplifting, spiritual, unifying experience of the soul. It's not just getting my needs met the way it's been made so coarse. And that's one thing the world really needs to work on and fix is to be more elevated in how it understands what it means when a man and woman connect or other kinds of relationships. It should understand there's a very deep. Um, sensitivity and, and oneness taking place that that's very spiritual and enlivening and it's the power to procreate to bring souls down even if you don't create a child but the physical manifestation but spiritually there's souls being connected and joined down and you can have in mind that the world should be populated through souls through spirituality and those souls shouldn't go to waste and that's a very important concept during the Yom Kippur service we fix that up just by being part of the Yom Kippur um, experience and the prayer service and the whole holiness of that day and that's a very powerful concept also as part of bringing Mashiach that all the souls a certain amount of souls need to come down to the world to populate this world a certain amount of people and once that's reached that that climax of of connection of oneness of the world of all the souls that needed to be be created and, and brought down throughout history, then the Mashiach can come. And that's the idea that you were asking about, how, how do you recognize Mashiach? So for sure someone like Rabbi Osh, who's very soulful, will recognize Mashiach. It's not a question, maybe amongst the Siddiquim this time, the hidden righteous people, they already know who Mashiach is. But for someone like ourselves, who are more physical and more in the world, then we have the opportunity to spiritualize ourselves a little bit during these special times. And hopefully when Mashiach comes, it will spiritualize the world. There'll be a, an awareness, a das, a, a complete expression of das to the world, of maybe through the internet, I don't know, but definitely on the inner level, everyone will become more awakened of the soul level and the soul will start to communicate more and the physical aspects, the agendas, the, the evil inclination that tries to capture us will have less control on our beings so we'll become more spiritual and that's very important that the, we shouldn't let the outside forces control our inner understandings of who we are. It's a very deep concept. I hope I'm not like, you know, take going too much but I think that the idea of Mashiach shouldn't be externalized and made um, some sort of like, you know, messianic, like, you know, scary, doom, uh, uh, apocalyptic, I don't even know how to say the thing. It shouldn't be that kind of experience. It's, it's a soul inner thing. There's no one who's going to have control. You're not going to, now, because this guy was going on and on about Mashiach, say so now he's on the Messiah, he's in control. It's his, his, his God, his 
power, you know, whatever, all these kind of movements and all these people that comment, God forbid, hopefully not on our videios, but they get very excited, you know, Mashiach is going to, you know, rule over. No, it's, it's, not, it's not some like horrible, like, you know, um, demonic force ruling over other people. It's, it's, it's a revelation of soul. It's a revelation of spirituality and everything. And so everything physical becomes one with spirituality. Emotional world is no longer blocking. Like um, the concept we came up with is that Joe Rogan was talking about. I mean, another guy, Chucky as well. People were asking about this idea of blocking blessings or how do we get to a more elevated like level of function and like so he's thinking technologically like you know with people like Elon Musk they're going to put these chips and in, into the brains and we're going to communicate through higher levels of realms of thoughts yeah yeah whatever this is this might take place but the, the, and we shouldn't underestimate what this all these technological developments are happening but at the same time the whole real concept is that the soul will communicate it's not the these like you know oh what's going to be I'm not going to be able to speak you're going to be able to speak because your soul is going to communicate to another being it's going to be soul talk. It's going to be songful and, and with love. And the, there's going to be no miscommunication. That's in itself a, a whole struggle. Like even like as I'm fasting, I can't even say these words exactly the way I'd like to speak. But the concept of communication is very important. You know, we write a book, we put out blogs. We, you know, blogs are old now. But we do, we do uh, live feeds, do this, that. And still just the tip of the iceberg of how much within, how much soul powers, and it's very important to realize that within your children, within the people around you, the new generation, they're doing all these Zoom chat things, to understand that, you know, there's a soul connection when you meet with someone and communicate, and you intimately learn with them about something deep, those conversations, when I was first beginning, my journey was so deep, in the combi van and the long hair, I got a picture of my album, yeah, together with, you know, playing a guitar those were deep moments of revelation of deep ideas that i hadn't ever learned in any torah book but they were like preparation building the vessels so that when the light came of torah i was able to be a vessel and that's very important that we communicate with the people we're with and online in a more spiritual way and we understand that that the all those things going on out are just stepping stones like the technological revolution is stepping stone the key is that it should contain soul that the land of Eretz Israel has to be soulful. It's not enough that we live here, but it has to have a soul. It has this whole like intense, rrr, rrr, angry. Like, I was like walking home, this guy driving along, police guy looks so angry. His whole energy, his whole get up. It's like, you know, rrr, like this is not, that's not, it's not going to heal the coronavirus, this approach. It's what's going to heal the coronavirus is soul, as Rav spoke about. More amuna and more of connection that people will be able to connect they won't put out these biological weapons or wherever it came from. They won't be these problems like this. They won't need to be these kind of viruses because we're, we'll make a monoviral. We'll make soul experience. There won't be such a, a jealousy and competitive amongst the nations. They'll actually work together. There'll be more unity because in the United Nations will have soul. It'll be a whole different experience. It won't be money agendas and power agendas. It will be soul agendas. Think about the whole change of everything when the focus is the soul. Think about how every uh, podcast and every discussion online and every politics and every post underneath and the whole concept, well, that's Mashiach. Mashiach is soul. It's experience of Amunah, of Neshama. He, he has a neshama that he's going to reveal his soul. And that's, it says he has the shorish neshama, the root neshama of Moshe Rabbeinu, of Moses. And that soul is, is call out all the Jewish neshamas. It, it includes all the Jewish neshamas, which includes all the souls of the world. Because it says that when we read the Torah, we have the 600,000 letters. That there's, there's less, but when you learn out how the letters work, there's actually 600,000 letters that were written in the Torah, connect 600,000 souls that stood at Hasinai, and connect to those souls of the three million or have a million, million Jewish souls that were around, and all through each letter. For example, an Aleph has a Yud and a Vav and a Yud, so that's already three souls. And it, you, know, you take each letter apart, has many, many souls connected within, so it joins up to many other souls. And then you understand how when we read the Torah the whole way through, twice, so there's different levels of the soul, the first, the lower level and the higher level, and then that, that's the idea the whole year round. We read the whole Torah from beginning to end, the first level of the soul and the higher level of the soul. And then we go to Unculus. This is the, the, uh, the translation that was written by Unculus Aguirre, who was a Roman convert. And he wrote the translation of the Torah, which is accepted as holy as holy. And it's written in, in different language, in, in the language of, of, of Unculus or whatever language it is. For some reason, my mind's forgotten. Targum, I think, is the name we call it. The translation of 
in, in the language that was Aramaic, I believe. So he put it out there, and we have this opportunity with this translation. And you guys can help me with anything I'm missing. But the translation is connects into all the non-Jewish souls. He was able to b- connect all the non-Jewish souls. We had Nisan Black and Yosef Daniel, Malachi Ben Avram. Bring all the souls in. All the souls, not just the Jewish souls, but the whole world's souls needs to be within that experience of what it means, the light of the Torah. And that's Simcha Torah. That's why we dance with the Torah because it's connecting in the light of the Torah. Mashiach himself will have to hold a Sefer Torah. That's one of the ways we'll recognize that he'll represent Torah. He'll have Torah, but not like like a, a closed-minded experience of Torah, but a, 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 a universal level, a light that's inclusive, that, that brings all the, out the souls of humanity. And therefore, once the soul level is revealed, there won't be any exclusiveness. There won't be these exclusive yeshivas that you know, we're experiencing right now in the education system, where it means you only can get in if this and that and this and that. It will be inclusive. It will be an inclusive experience. Revoish himself is so inclusive. When I go there, like I took my son, who's having some challenges, and he was so inclusive, I invited him to join the kolo and the yeshiva, to come speak to him anytime, to get help. And it was a beautiful, beautiful experience for my son. It was, for me, it was, uh, I, you know, out of this world. I went on Rosh Hashanah, my son came, he's dressed differently to the people there, and he was able to, you know, join in and be part of it. Everyone's so friendly. And then he went and, uh, as a Kohen, we duchen, we I had in mind shalom to the world. That's another name for Mashiach, shalom. There should be peace and should be a you know, shameless completion. That idea that we complete each other. We're, we're all lacking if we're by ourselves. And I'm sorry this is such a long class, but the idea of, and, and another thing, people throw all these like quotes from the Tanakh, you know, from the Bible or whatever they it's, I appreciate it, but just understand that we're not talking just specifically only scriptures. We're talking about the soul within the scriptures as a soul level. And if it, if it makes you think that your religion is right, then that's already not soulful because that's not inclusive. Soulful is the soul level is all inclusive. It's, it, it's the shorish of humanity. So there's no like exclusiveness, like my, my religion, my people. It's, it's such a false thing. Uh, Theology is so old school already. Like, you know, we let's go to the new school way of thinking of understanding that there's inclusiveness. And not only that, the the, the religion is is in itself is a Greek word, it's nothing to do with anything Judaism, it's nothing to do with all these words, they're just limitations. This the idea of the oneness of humanity, the soul level, is is something which is very deep. And the, the Jewish soul, which has a specific mission, like we said, is not something which is trying to, God forbid, exclude anybody. Yeah? So, in terms of someone asked my email, it's underneath. I always put it underneath. Someone from Milan saying hello on Facebook. I don't know someone put an angry face. <laughs> you know why? Why be angry? Then you're not being soulful. It's your loss. Try work that anger issue out. Go speak to someone. You know, don't share your anger issues as that that's gonna gonna resolve mankind. It's not. It's not gonna make your life better. It's got to come from soul levels. Soul levels mean good meters, good character traits. You know, I'm working on this myself. It's a very long class. Shem, forgive me. I don't usually do long classes like this. But, you know, this is something which, you know, I'm not going to be able to speak about in the next few weeks. And it's just a shame. You know, in Israel, we thank God. In Jerusalem, we get to experience such deep experiences. Like Rosh Hashanah was so out of this world with the shofar blowing and Shabbos. And we get to experience such soulful days it's so sad that so many people in the world know nothing about so many jews in the world know nothing about the the days of the soul these soulful days shabbos shabbat or yom kippur to not experience a yom kippur to fast i mean thank god jeff palver told me that's his day he disconnects completely from the internet you know please go one day all the shabbos is but the idea and then sukkot the day you know i didn't grow up i didn't even know what sukkot was i didn't know I, I grew up, I, did, I never saw, really even saw a suk as far as I remember. I never saw a little of Esra. You know, now with Chabad, hopefully it's everywhere somewhat. But I didn't see that growing up in such a Chabad, you know, as a child. I never got to dance with the Torah as a child. I never got to, you know, to, to shake a little of an Esra as a child. You know, only got, the first time I ever shook a little of an Esra, I think I was uh, already um, 18, 19. You know, that, all those years, you know, I only put to fill in on when I was 18. All those years missed, or I didn't know about it. And it's a chaval, it's a shame, you know, there's so many people just not knowing 
these beautiful ways to connect into godliness and what this root level, that there's soul there. It's not just some, you know, archaic tradition. It's a soulful experience. It's spiritualizing a whole body when you shake a lulav. We spoke about it. The lulav is the spine and the hadas is the eyes and the arav is the lips and the, and the heart is the esrog and spiritualizing a whole being. I already bought my lulav and esrog, thank God. You know, with the lockdown here, I already got it before then. And we have the opportunity to spiritualize a whole human being. And like I said, the simple story to bring the Torah in, the light of the whole Torah, which is connected to the light of all the souls of mankind, to dance with that, to be happy to open up our hearts. And that's what I end off with. It's been a long one today. I apologize. Longest class I've ever given on these. And I just want to say that all you, yeah, you go train, do your exercise, keep a healthy life style, do all these good things because it goes together. To have a healthy soul, we have to have a healthy body. It's very important to have a healthy emotional well-being so there shouldn't be blockages in the, in the levels of spiritual experiences. And that will give us all the sensitivity after we do all the hard work, hopefully during this month of Tishrei. Then we'll have, hopefully the ability um, to live what it means to connect into life with Amuna and we'll understand what it means when Mashiach comes, the light of Mashiach, how it will bring everything together in a complete way. And the things like viruses would be just famous stories that we went through in history, like the story of leaving Egypt. It won't be something like continual and 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 God forbid, something that we have to suffer from anymore. It should just be a positive reality, and everyone should be a Gemach It should be sealed for a complete blessing for a new year. And please, God, when Rav Arash gets back, and we begin again on Muna classes, please join us. And in the meanwhile, go back and watch all those previous ones. He covered a lot of the questions people ask in those Amuna classes, and I myself am happy to be part of this beautiful world of Amuna. Amen. And we should dance in Mashiach, so Kenan, Amen, Amen, Amen. Thank you for joining us. Share the class. Share the love. Share the amuna. Share the soul.